Yeah, I'm going to talk about platforms, API platforms, and about, um, uh, from the perspective of virtualization. And the goal of this presentation is to uh, show the need for service virtualization to make your API platform complete. It's one piece in the piece of the big puzzle. And I will also show how this need can be fulfilled. So I start with an empty page. <laughs> no, actually, I first just want to say who am I? Uh, I'm Matti Jelm. I work on the other side of the bridge at a company called SmartPair, and I'm product owner for SoapUI. And SoapUI is one of the most used tools for testing APIs. And that would be appropriate in a testing, uh, an API conference, of course. Uh, so I would like to know a little bit about who you are. Uh, how many here are developers? Oh, that's so many. <laughs> and how many are testers? Two, three, four? And how many have been using SoapUI? Oh, shit. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so surprised. Uh, my guess was this. <laughs> because normally when it's a lot of developers and few testers, it's very few SoapUI users. OK, I'm glad that. <laughs> and what is Red API? It's not just a hat. It's actually um, a new product. And it's you could call it SoapUI++ because it's SoapUI improved, much easier to use, and uh, s still the same functionality in, in the base, but you, uh, we add service virtualization and better load testing and um, security testing. OK, back to the subject. What is service virtualization? Does any, or everyone know what it is? Or the ones who know can raise their hands. <laughs> OK, not so many. Uh, that's good. Um, because otherwise you would know everything I'm going to say. <laughs> it's an emulation of a real service. And it acts like this, the real service, but it's very often a little bit limited functionality. But, but um, uh, from a testing perspective, it, it looks like the real service, and you can run the same tests against it. And you can also be used it for simulating. I mean, it's emulating, simulating a lot of words, but. I like this way of saying it, that you use an emulator to simulate, for instance, bad behavior like slow responses and uh, erratic responses. And that's also interesting to test what happens when a client calls an API that responds strangely, suddenly. And normally, you virtualize other APIs. You build your own system that ha is depending on other APIs, and it could be internal APIs, it doesn't have to be web APIs. But um, you, you virtualize them very often as a developer by writing some code that mimics the, 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 the API that you don't have control over yourself. But what I'm saying, as an app API platform provider, you should virtualize your own API and share it with your consumers or developers and customers. So, and, and why should you virtualize your own API? Uh, it was fun to see uh, the, the presentation yesterday of Dennis Peterson. He talked about uh, the, the Lego candy that they created together with Kellogg's. And when they released it and started selling it, they got angry mothers calling them up, and angry fathers also probably, saying that you shouldn't teach my kid to, to eat things like, that look like Lego. <laughs> so they withdraw the product really quick. And I imagine if you could have had virtual candy to give to these parents and, and, um, and kids, they would have known this. Of course, they did flavor testing and testing of the package and all that, but they didn't do real user testing. They could have done that if they had virtual candy. Of course, they could have used it real candy also. <laughs> but imagine if you can to what you can do with virtual uh, simulations of the reality. It's much cheaper than producing real candy. And to, um, to um, elaborate a little bit more on the background, I need to go through the normal stages of desktop software maturity stages. First, when you uh, invent a desk, some kind of software that you normally install on, on desktops, th th there is actually that kind of software still. And not everything is APIs. And not everything is in the cloud or on the web. 
And what you do first, you, you probably invent some kind of unique functionality and you'll del deliver that. And because it's unique, it, does, it doesn't really matter how the user interface looks like, and it's often very limited functionality, so the, the user interface is not really in the way. And the second stage, you get, get to add a lot of features, because suddenly there is a lot of competitors that you have to uh, keep ahead of. And uh, also customers start to realize that that first unique functionality is not enough. And in that haste, the design becomes second priority. So you add a lot of features, and uh, the, the, the user interface t looks clo totally cluttered and ugly after a while. So you need to enter the third stage to, to clean things up. And customers and newcomers to the software, they ask for simplicity because they don't understand how to use the software. And in the fourth and final stage, your software becomes like a commodity, and you start to integrate with other... Um, other software, like integrate with other tools and uh, other companies create plugins for your software. You know, maybe you're, you create your own software as a plugin to their other software and so on. And you might end up delivering an SDK. And in the case of, uh, for instance, um, iOS and Android, you have SDKs that help you deliver apps. And of course, it's, I think it's standard, both Android and iOS, they deliver emulators or virtualized versions of their environments. Test against those instead uh, of, of testing for, on real smartphones. It's, it's much easier to just change a configuration instead of connecting different phones, and it's much, more, and much cheaper also, of course. And it's a, I think there is a similar uh, stage development in, in the API market. First you have some unique features, maybe they're hard to use, and then you add features to keep competitors behind. And in a later stage you have to improve the developer experience to keep the third-party devs coming back. And part of that last stage is to serve with testing environments for the developers. And that last stage is also about creating an ecosystem to, 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 um, to get a following and to, to to get all that magic from your API that you didn't know even existed. And so you have to, the developers, the first users of your API, you have to make sure they can learn your API, they can develop and they can test it. And also, as I learned from a speech yesterday of Daniel Rudmark, uh, it was also you have to fulfill the intrinsic needs of developers. <coughs> Uh, which is um, the developers need, a, need to be feeling that they are in control and get engagement from platform owner and so on. So why don't you just share your testing environment? Let's set up some servers and dedicate some of your service to testing. The problem is that in this new economy, user needs are unpredictable. It's not like the SOA world where you had control over which were the users and when they were allowed to use your system. More looks like this in the API world. You know, the, there is no predictability when and where the API calls are coming from and how much. So if the user needs are unpredictable in times of load combinations and peak hours, probably the testing uh, is, is also unpredictable. So maybe you have to prepare for, for um, really big volumes of testing, which could be really expensive. But instead, I, I advise you to encourage local testing. So you should build and shareable and distributable virtualized versions of your API. And this will simplify testing locally and give these intrinsic needs a fulfillment. And um, you can also share your own APIs, test cases, and test suites, both to show that you have actually tested and how you have tested it. It's also a good way to learn, teach your developers how to use the API in the correct way, because your tests will be patterns of usage. And the, the developers can also use these test suites to check if they are doing something wrong or if the servers are actually down or what's happening because they can run the test against the real. Um, and this also helps the design first test redesign cycle efficiently. You can, uh, instead of starting to, uh, just after you've designed 
the API, you can quickly create virtualized versions of the API instead of building the actual API and let developers and users start to use it all, all immediately. And then you will get feedback on how you should redesign your API quickly. And so your need will be that these verts, uh, I call them verts, uh, short for virtualized services, the verts that you want to create, they need to be usable. And this means that they should be able to emulate the core functionality of your API. And more than the core, but, but not everything. You should be able to simulate behavior like slow response times and s suddenly random um, error messages or, and random uh, ways of returning wrong results and so on. It should also be easily configurable to set up all these different behavior. It should su support security like OAuth 2. It should be data-driven so you can uh, not just do always re re respond with the same data. You should, should have, I mean, the more different answers you can simulate, the, the, the better it is. And so you should be able to connect it to a database and drive these uh, words with a database. It should be distributable to your clients and customers and developers, and it should be deployable locally. And I, I, I think it's, I mean, the first thing that you come to think of is uh, then you have double work. You first have your API that you're actually developing, and then you have the, the virtualized version. But it, it's, it's really easy to, to, if you're, for instance, using RAML as a documentation uh, format for your APIs, if you follow that, those rules, you have example responses in the RAML files, and it's really easy to get up to speed and create virtualized versions of it. And compared to exposing the real uh, service, I mean, you, you have the real functionality in this real service, but adding, uh, exposing it as a, as a test service is a lot of work. Um, and that test uh, environment is depending on other APIs that you either have to virtualize or solve in some other way. So I don't think that that's an easier approach. You always have also have to manage that test environment in some way. If you distribute it to your clients, they manage it themselves, more or less. So I think you should will we'll save some money on, on having these virtualized services instead of running them yourselves on test servers. As I said before, the demands are also unknown, so you could end up having to invest a lot of money in test servers otherwise. So let the clients run the tests themselves. Also, uh, I think that one thing that could help in the future is that uh, my, my well-known APIs, uh, maybe the, the API providers won't have themselves to create uh, the virtualized services. It could be better that the developers or the crowd out there create these verts for everyone to use. And I, could be somewhere like GitHub, maybe, that you can share all these virtualized services. And uh, I got some questions on, there might be some drawbacks over verts. If you have control over the testing service, testing version of your API that developers can access, you can easily uh, analyze usage pattern of, of your service. Maybe it's not really true because while testing, it's not going to be the real usage patterns. And there is nothing that says that in these virtualized versions of the API, of course you can add hooks into Google Analytics to send up usage data, so you can get that anyway. And I don't think it should be hard to maintain because of something that Johannes Lundberg of 46 Elks said yesterday. Oops. Why is Skype coming in? I, it's not even on. <laughs> Maybe it's a virtual Skype. I don't know. Uh, okay, but APIs deliver simplicity, simple views of the complexity. So the, the purpose of an API is to make something complex simple. And 
then it means that it should be easy to, in a virtualized API, you only need to present the shell on the outside. That should be simple. So I, th I think it should be simple. It lies in its nature. And finally, uh, is there any platform that can do this? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> That's why I'm here. It's called Red API. And you can create verts. And they are configurable, scriptable, data-driven, supports WS security, SSL support, deployable, and one-clickable, I say, because it's so easy to create them. Looks like that. The ad looks like that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.